Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the 80s version of The Twilight Zone. This week we are watching The Road Less Traveled, The Girl I Married, and Shelter Skelter. It's a weird name. Uh, the Road Less Traveled is Wes Craven and George R. R. Martin, and this was a, originally shot as a 45-minute episode, but it got cut down to 30 uh, I'm not entirely sure what they cut out and how that would have contributed to the story because I think it still gets told in a manner that we all can sort of follow along and make something out of. It's all about draft dodging, which is a thing that happened during the Vietnam War where people in the US would go north to Canada to not be drafted into war. Um, it's a bit weird, but that's how it works. Um... Margaret uh, Natch, I think, Denise, uh, is an actual psychologist now. She wasn't when this episode was shot, but she is now. Um, he slept in his car. He should have taken the Volvo. There are you know, two cars. He should have taken the Volvo because it's way more uh, comfortable, I'm guessing. Uh, this beard prop is not good. Uh, let's face it. It is not a good beard prop. Um, he does describe re-traumatized PTSD, uh, how, how the horrors of war keeps resurfacing over and over and how he gets no help. This is the central theme behind First Blood, the first Rambo movie, how he hasn't quite gotten through this. He's still carrying the Vietnam War and then he gets re-traumatized and in Rambo's case it just triggers him and he goes on this sort of rampage because they drew First Blood, as he puts it. Um, there's a double shot. I, uh, it has a good lighting effect in it so that you don't see it all that much. Uh, it's, it's well done. And the legs in the chair is, is actual a mirror effect. It's pretty difficult to spot. Uh, but it, it's nice. I like it. They, they did a good job on it. The Girl I Married is a sort of shorter story. Um, and, it has a hokey sort of frame transition that I did not like too much. Um, I, I don't know why they did it that way, but that's how they did it. Now, the final part of this, the, the double shot, um, is, is not actually a split screen. It is a green screen effect. So it, they're cut in over a background and it, you can spot it, but it is, it is very, I, I wouldn't say jarring, but, it does catch my my attention a bit. Shelter Skelter, finally. Uh, Joan Allen was in Face Off and Death Race, Pleasantville, Born Supremacy, like all over the place, right? It's really cool. Uh, and Joe Mantagna, uh, he is Fat Tony in The Simpsons. That's where you recognize that uh, voice from. Now, he's in the shelter, and there's an explosion, and he manages to push the door closed, like so. Now, if there was an actual explosion, the shockwave would be moving at about the speed of sound, and there is no way he would have been able to hold the door back in in the face of that sort of force. He would just been shot back out the moment he touched the door. But, oh well. They have supplies in their bunker. I get that. You can have water reclamation, you can have a well, you can have air cycling, you can have air filtration, you can have shelves stocked full of food, all that stuff. But trash would be an issue. Uh, in, in several of these stories about post-apocalyptic bunker life, uh, the bunkers start fighting amongst themselves because of the premium space needed to handle the garbage. Uh, and these two people are closed in in a very small space. So unless they dug a very capacious garbage pit under the bunker, they would run out of space. They would just produce so much garbage. Um, but it doesn't work that way. Uh, that skeleton would, of course, not be bare. In a nuclear explosion like this, there is no vermin left, um, and it would nothing would be there to pick the bones clean. Uh, I mean, bacteria could technically do it, but it would take a very, very long time to get bones that clean. So that shot implies that the rats lived. That's good, I guess. Um, the shot of the dome itself, which is a lovely little shot, I like the model work, 
uh, shows a sort of half light. And if there is an actual dome on top of this to contain radioactive, um, radioactive material and radiation, it will be kind of solid. What light is there in there? Um, is it glowing because of the radioactivity? Eh? Um, the final shot, this lovely green screen with light effects. Uh, that's, that's nice. I like how they did that. They, they pulled it off well, considering the technology they had available. And, and yeah, it, it works out fine for me. I, I think it captures the sort of scale of what is going on behind her. Now, I wish I knew what we're going to watch next week. Hmm. Anyway, see you then.